you very much, Kobe. So, an incredible series and a lot of incredible players there for that one. It's been a week full of high stakes games and huge plays, but there was one player who stood out from the rest of the pack. Our MVP this week, Cloud9's High. Yeah, High's focus and roaming game were critical components in getting Cloud9 out to an early lead in these games. He had great plays on the block, Lulu, and Twisted Fate, and he really helped carry his team, and he is now riding an 18-game winning streak with them. He had zero deaths in the finals, got two first bloods, and assisted in the other one. Even if High doesn't have the best CS at 10 minutes, he wins in other ways. He makes the calls for his team, mm -hmm. he always knows where to go, and he makes the plays when it counts. He had a 34.5 KDA in the yeah. playoffs. Like, what the heck? That's ludicrously good. High absolutely stepped up. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny. I know Kobe brought it up, but the fact that, oh, you know, Cloud9's got the best team play, but not the best players. High was yeah. phenomenal. Depends how you value who the best player is at that time, because yeah. there's so many intangibles that don't s just stand out in conventional stats, like the way High controls vision in the mid lane and the calls he makes for the team. Yeah. Very impressive. Absolutely impressive. So for more now on the Spring Split Champions, let's throw it down across the studio to QuickShot. Thank you very much, guys. I am happy to be joined by all of Cloud9. This is no longer the analyst desk. This is Cloud9's desk. And I think it is totally earned and totally deserved. Congratulations, LCS Spring Split Champions for North America. Second title in a row. I want to throw a question to Meteors first. Unkilled in three games against Team Solo Mid. High grabbed the MVP title. He also went unkilled. Why was it so convincing that you beat TSM? Well, I think we played really well in this set. Basically, all of our practice leading up to this was really good practice, and we really, I guess, showed up today and played as well as I think we can, really. So uh, when we play really well, we don't have to die. We had really good vision control, so we didn't get surprised by too many ganks. We didn't get super greedy. We just did what we had to do. Lemon, it seems as though Cloud9 anticipated what TSM was doing. It, it always felt you were one step ahead. Why is it you had such immaculate control? I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that we had so much CC and catch, and they really didn't have any at all. It gave us a big advantage in being able to just control the game like throughout all of it. Well, I definitely showed. Congratulations once again. Uh, Sneaky, you performed phenomenally well. Uh, we, you always hear the, the adage about Cloud9 and how they don't have the best players, but you've got the best teamwork. I think that's bollocks, by the way. I think you guys are phenomenal. You in particular have held the number one ranked spot in North America for so long. Transition more from the utility Eddie carries last year to now damages. You got a ton of kills this series. How have you done it? How have you, was it a change in play style or were you always able to do this? Um, it was a lot in change of champions played because before I was playing Sivir, Ash, and just really supporting champions, but now I'm playing Carry champions like Lucian is the biggest one. He's really good at carrying. And then Corky, Graves, they all have insane kits for carrying. And I guess just playing a lot of solo queue and getting number one spot. And actually, my Smurf is like number 25 now or something. I'm really getting up there. And <laughs> it's just all the practice leading up to it has made me a bit better player. I want to say that I I know Sneaky could always carry like this. Just in the past split, we really wanted him on kind of a more CC oriented type carry. But this split, it's Lucian and champions like that have just been much stronger. Well, it's, it's good play. I want to know, how do you keep number one on the solo queue? What's your <laughs> trick? And how do you have a second Smith in 25? What's, what's sneaky secret to solo queue? Um, well, obviously playing the ADK role is a lot of the big key because I can actually get the big items and one-shot most people with like Draven and stuff. Um, but I actually have to battle Chris a lot for the number one spot because he plays a game and wins a lot of points and I have to get it back myself. Well, it definitely works in your favor. Balls, you are widely regarded as the best top laner in North America. Uh, I know you personally silenced me as a critic at Intel Extreme Masters World Championship, delivering, you always deliver. I mean, there's never a doubt. So my question to you is, how is it that you can always perform at such an incredibly high level and it appears that nothing faces you? Well, I just play the top lane line. I have to like, you just have to start well, that's pretty it. obvious. <laughs> Because uh, there's not really much uh, to say about this. Like, I just farm a lot. You just play the game? TVE. Yeah, I just try to survive. Like, Jax versus Renekton. Uh, I think that was the hardest lane of the game. And uh, all I had to do was survive for my team and get to late game. And that's when I can carry. 
Well, it definitely works out. Congratulations once more. We're going to go back to Meteos for this one. Uh, talk a little bit more about Cloud9 throughout the split. You guys were not the number one team for the majority of this and only really grabbed the number one seed coming into playoffs in the last two weeks. What was up? How come you weren't, <laughs> how come you weren't as dominant? I'm using this term quite loosely. Well, in the beginning of the split, we dropped more games than we normally do because the game changed a lot from our style uh, last year, which was pretty much farming a lot, trying to scale into late game, not going for a ton of early aggressive plays. And then uh, this season we had to change a lot more, especially for me, I had to play like Lee Sin, stuff like that, and go for the early plays. And sometimes when you go for early plays, you, they can either backfire and you get really behind if they don't work, and the early game champions just aren't as good at scaling into the game. So we lost a few games just because we got outscaled and we couldn't make the plays that we had to. So a lot of it was just trying to adapt to, to the game as it's changing. So it's always possible. Every time there's a new change, we might not adapt correctly. But we do our best, and we brought it together pretty well towards the end. I, I like the, the discussion about adapting, because I've got a question for Lemon. Just a few more before we start to wrap this up. How is it that Cloud9 is such a moldable team? When I look at North America and Europe, no team stands out to me as a team that changes or adapts as quickly or as effectively as Cloud9. So how do you manage to interpret patches and adjust each of your team's individual play styles to match it? Well, I think all of us do a good job of looking at the patch and kind of talking it through and figuring out what's going to be strong. And we're also not afraid of trying out things in scrims a lot. I also feel that more so than any other team, all of our players can really play almost any champion that comes and becomes popular and becomes the new meta. It definitely appears to be that way. So just as a closing question now, you guys have locked in your spot for Paris. So bonjour, omelette du fromage, baguette, and, and all that other stuff. So Sneaky, looking at All Stars, how are you going to prepare for another international competition? You guys did incredibly well at Intel Extreme Masters World Championships. How do you replicate that success? Well, a big key going into um, IEM before was getting there really early and being able to practice and get really used to the jet lag and stuff. And then we were able to practice some in scrims against our European team, Cloud9 Eclipse. So I think if we get some good practice against some European teams and whoever else is out there, the Korean teams and China's, China teams, then I think we can perform well. All right, well, I sincerely hope you guys do a great job. Congratulations once again, and I'm looking forward to seeing you at All Stars. We are about to throw it back to Freak and Jat. So let's bring the MVP back in. Kobe and Saint have joined us to congratulate you all, the entire Cloud9 team, including owner as well as the analyst. And I think we just need to celebrate just one last time. I believe after your fantastic performance securing a Splinks of Champion, oh we need God. to celebrate one last time. The North American All-Star Representatives. Congratulations, guys. We haven't told you yet, but you need to clean this up afterwards. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Thank you very much. We're going to throw this back over to the cast today to wrap up.